There's a brand new option in SharePoint file versioning that will save you a ton of money on storage costs, but only if you set it up right. I'm going to break down why this thing was even created, how it works, and how to configure it. Let's just jump straight into it. So here's the problem organizations have been facing since really the, the, the beginning of SharePoint Online and the cloud storage that came with it. They ran out of storage. They're uploading files into SharePoint. They're uploading files into OneDrive. And there's file versioning built into both of these products. And by default, I believe it's 500 versions it will keep. Now, normally this really isn't even a problem unless you're getting 500 versions of large files. Think about a PowerPoint file that has a lot of videos in that. You're gonna end up with a pretty big PowerPoint file. And I measured 500 versions of that. Now do this across all of your sites and the tenant. You will run out of space. You've only got so much tenant storage to begin with. And if you need more, it's going to cost. So you'll have to pay for any extra. The more you can do to eke out a little bit of extra use out of that same storage space, the more you'll save in the long run. So organizations have been dealing with this problem. Uh, the best they can. And sometimes that involves moving documents into their own library so you can have versioning either turned off or set extremely low. In other cases, they've just had to keep the documents where they're at and they would have to sacrifice all the file versioning benefits by either disabling it or reducing it to a small amount. Now, there's gonna be a better way to do that though and you can start to preview this now. And you can start to try out this new method of file versioning now because it is in a preview period. Here's how it works. You have the ability to do things the way you have been doing them, just setting versioning limits based on the total number of versions. But you've got some other options. In fact, they've kind of reorganized how this, this whole thing works. Looking at the harder way to do this, you can continue to maintain only a maximum number of versions and just let the old versions fall off or automatically get trimmed. Uh, so you can do things that way. You also can specify a number of days of how many days of versioning you want to keep. So you could, and you could use both of those actually at the same time. But there's an easier way. You don't have to figure out how many versions do I want? How many days should I be keeping this stuff? You can just forget all that. There's a whole new method and it's an automatic versioning system. So the way this works is that as files are modified you know, a lot more frequently, it's gonna start keeping more versions. Once, these, once the file is, has kind of stabilized, it's not really getting changes anymore or it's getting changes very rarely, then the number of versions starts to drop uh, because uh, you know obviously that file has reached a, a point in its maturity where it doesn't really need to be modified much anymore. It, it, so at that point, you don't really need to keep a lot of file versions for it anymore. So that's kind of the, the way this works, the way the algorithm works for that. But it, it is a set it and forget it type thing. You can turn this on and just walk away. You don't have to do any calculations. You don't have to, to, to determine how many file versions plus how many times or how many days do you want to keep. You don't have to do any of that. So you get the benefit of the file versioning, with, but you also get a really balanced way of maintaining those file versions, minimizing the storage impact of those versions. So this is the balanced approach versus the older method, which was just based on the version count, and that used the most storage over a long period of time. That's gonna definitely use the most storage, and that's how people got in this situation to begin with. We didn't have this to begin with. We should have, I, I think. It would have been great. But the 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 old method of using the most storage is forget it. No one, you should not be using this one anymore. There is the other method, no, that was introduced, and it's the based on the number of days. Now, that's going to use the least amount of storage. But the problem there is you're going to be really limited. Like, suppose you say uh, you only want to keep one month of, uh, of versions. Well, if you realize something was deleted two months ago, that, that thing is gone. You cannot get it back because you've the, the system has already deleted or purged the older versions uh, older than one month anyway, it's been purged out of the system. So if you, you, you've got on one end of the spectrum, you've got 
the trimming based off of how many days, uh, uh, how, how many days of, of versioning you want to keep. On the other end, you've got the traditional uh, version count based method, which uses the most storage. And then right smack dab in the middle, you've got this automatic versioning that is a balance between the two and you, does it require any configuration? You just turn it on. That's it. So how do you how do you get started with this stuff? Well, there's you can actually apply this in three different levels. L let me just actually show you this. So let's hop over to the desktop. So we're here at this. We're here in the SharePoint Admin Center. If we go to Settings, we'll see the file version, the version history limits. Now, if you don't see this in your environment yet, and you probably don't, then Hang on because we have to run some commands to actually turn this stuff on because it is, as I mentioned, in a preview period. But once we go through kind of how this works, I'll show you how to cut this stuff on. So if you go to version history limits, this which is a brand new option, by the way, you'll see the configuration for this. Now, you can set this to autom the automatic one I mentioned, or you can control it manually, which was the old method and then the new method. And you can control this a few different ways. You could use the old version of using the uh, version count only, uh, but then there's also the option below that for the time-based account. So you could use the older based method of just using the version count, but you could also specify the time. How, how much do you want to, how, how many days uh, do you want to keep versions? And, you, and like I mentioned, you could use both of these at the same time, but the recommended way, as you can see, is just to set it to automatic. And now everything in SharePoint will be set to automatic versioning. But you know there's going to be those times when you need to override that. You need to change it. You've got things where you need either a lot more control over the versioning or you, or you need to just dial it down, something like that. And for that case, you can still go to uh, a particular library and you can go to a site, but the site takes a little bit extra extra work. But if you go to a particular document library, you go to versioning settings like you're used to seeing, but with the preview thing turned on, you're gonna see those same options here. What kind of versioning do you wanna use? Do you wanna use uh, automatic? Do you wanna use manual? So this whole section is actually new because we used to have the, uh, the, the thing up here where you just controlled what type of versioning and then you had the number of major versions. This section, the version time limit is brand new. And so by default, it'll be inheriting whatever is on the tenant, but you can change that now. So if you want, um, you can't set it lower than 30 days. And I think we'll see that if we try and change it here. Yeah, so it has to be between three, 30 days and um, whatever, 36,500, is that 10 years? I'm not sure what how many, how many days that is, but you'll have the ability to at least go down to uh, a 30 day period if you want to really dial in your versioning uh, habits or your versioning controls. So you've got options here. You can also set this on the site level. Now, one thing to note is you cannot, if you turn this on, like say I go from automatic down to 30 days and there's a lot of older versions that need to be trimmed. The automatic trimming will not happen. There will not be automatic trimming if you reduce down that stuff. You're gonna have to manually do that. I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. But first, let's actually talk about how to cut this thing on. There is going to be a PowerShell command you'll need to run. It's using the SharePoint management shell. I'm sure it'll eventually come to the PNP PowerShell. But for now, pay the uh, the SharePoint management shell you'll connect to your tenant or you'll run a command to enable this preview feature. And at that point, you'll see the options in the admin center and you'll see the options in your in uh, the document libraries. You'll also have some additional PowerShell commands you could run, such as setting the versioning at the site level. Now for the site, you have some options like, do you want to turn this on only for new libraries? Do you want to turn this on only for existing libraries? Do you want to turn this on for both at the same time? You have a lot of control there for how that's applied to sites. So you can dial that in just the way you need it to. So you've, you turn the feature on, 
you will configure it in the admin center because I would definitely recommend an org wide setting of automatic. I think that's going to be uh, the best option for everybody. And then based on your business use cases, you will change that either at a site level or at a document library level. Uh, the, the more narrowly scoped you can change that to allow like more versioning, for instance, the less of an impact it's going to have on your site quota or your tenant storage quota. That's going to preserve your storage space as long as possible, uh, delaying the additional purchase of storage uh, uh, until there's just no other option. So this will give you a lot more life out of your storage. But now let's talk about the, uh, the, the trimming thing. So when you turn this thing on, you're not going to automatically have old versions uh, purged out of the system. You will need to run a command if you want to do that uh, and just immediately free up space. And you'll be able to trim based off of uh, how many days old you want to trim, how many, uh, whether you want to trim based on the auto algorithm, the automatically versioning, uh, auto versioning algorithm, whatever you want to call that one. And, uh, and or if you want to trim based on the total number of versions. So you can, all three of those options, you can force a trim job to trigger off, to, to start off. And uh, it'll, I'm sure it will take some time. You're able to monitor that. You can cancel it, but it'll probably take some time to cancel that. But you have options there. So be aware of that. I've got links to all the documentation below in the video description so that you can quickly get to the, the different articles that talk about this from different points of view, whether that's from PowerShell, whether it's a feature overview, uh, a separate page just for that trimming uh, to, so you, you know how to do all the trimming by hand. Check this thing out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think this is going to be a really powerful way to to rein in all the storage, especially since versioning is turned on by default in SharePoint Online, which I don't believe was something we were used to in the on-premise days. Let's discuss it. Jump in the comments. Let's talk about this. What do you think about this? Do you have any concerns? Do you have any questions about this? Let me know, and I will see you on the next one.